Welcome to Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. Two presidential inaugurations are scheduled to take place this week. First is the inauguration of Gambia's president-elect, Adama Barrow, and the other is U.S. president-elect Donald Trump. While we're sure without a doubt the president-elect Donald Trump will be sworn into office, an air of uncertainty, however, hangs over Gambia. After rescheduling a visit by the ECOWAS delegation to his country from Wednesday to Friday last week, President Yaya Jame refused the heat appeals to step down from office, though he lost in the presidential election held on December 1st. President Mahmoud Buhari led the delegation comprising Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Senegalese President Macky Sall, and former Ghanaian President John Mahama to Banjul to appeal once more to the president. Winner of that election, Adama Barrow, has even promised that President Jame will be honored as a former head of state if he steps down. He also suggested that he might not face trial for alleged crimes committed during his time in power. Alas, the leaders failed to make any headway and carried on discussions at the Africa-France summit in Bamako, Mali. Though the meeting with the French president was supposed to focus on jihadist threats, challenges to governance and the migration crisis, Mr. Adama Barrow stole the spotlight when he appealed to West African leaders for help in ending the political impasse. Gambia's president-elect Adama Barrow certainly found a safe spot at the France-Africa leaders' meeting in Mali. French President François Hollande was already on his side, calling for result of the presidential election to be respected. Although leaders were supposed to be discussing security and migration on the continent, the Gambian impasse was high on the agenda. After the summit, the French president and ECOWAS leaders met with Mr. Barrow. Finally, we discussed specific situations, particularly what is happening in Gambia. Elections were held that were considered credible and transparent, and therefore the election results must be respected. You're seeing that the president-elect was welcomed at this summit, and everything must be done so that on January 18th or 19th, he's able to effectively take up his new role, and ECOWAS wanted to meet in parallel with this summit to reinforce this result. The ECOWAS delegation had met with the Gambian president on Friday, January the 13th, to try once again to persuade him on behalf of the regional bloc to make an honorable exit rather than risk dragging the country into crisis or civil war. While ECOWAS has voiced its commitment to seeking a peaceful solution to the impasse, it has also hinted at possible military action if Jame stays on beyond the end of his term next week. They plan to leave no doubt about the determination of ECOWAS to use all necessary means, including force, to have the will of the Gambian people upheld. Should this be deemed necessary, ECOWAS intends to seek the endorsement of the Africa Union Peace and Security Council and the formal approval. In the past, the AU has often talked tough, but backed away from any action that might lead to further conflict. However, international pressure on Jame is growing. The Nigerian House of Representatives had on Thursday voted to offer the embattled president asylum. <laughs> president Jame was not the only one sought by the ECOWAS delegation. The president-elect, Adama Barrow, also said he too had met with the delegation. Barrett promised that Jame would be honored as a former head of state if he stepped down and suggested he might not face strife for alleged crimes during his 22 years in power. But the coalition says negotiations are still underway. ECOWAS is still in the process. They have met both sides. They have listed because negotiation is looking at the divergent positions and you try to narrow it down. We are waiting for more efforts to be able to narrow down the difference. Meanwhile, an air of uncertainty hangs over the country. In the capital, many people have been leaving in the last week, fearful of a crackdown and a military intervention to unseat Jame. They fear their own life. This is why they are running. Even my own family. Some of them have left. They went to Jara. 
If you go to the ferry terminal or GPTC, you will see so many people, they are running, leaving the country. On Tuesday, a petition calling for the annulment of election result, which was due to be presented to the Supreme Court, could not be heard due to a shortage of judges. Outside the court, hundreds of people wearing green for the ruling APRC party put on a show of support that has not been seen since the polls for Jami. The supporters marched in the street, accusing Barra and the election commission of stealing the vote, chanting, it thieves and we want Yaya forever. The Supreme Court needs a minimum of five judges, which it lacks. The question of whether Gambia can overcome its political impasse and install Barrow as president is seen as a test case for African democracy, especially in a region used to coup and autocratic rule. We've talked about this several times, why it is difficult for African leaders to respect the ethos of democracy and why long-serving leaders of African countries are unwilling to hand over power despite elections. Executive Director of the West Africa Network for Peace Building, Mr. Chukwemeka Eze, answered this question a few weeks ago right here on Diplomatic Channel. The peck of leadership in Africa is too high. The stakes are extremely too high. And I think that for a very long time, we have also allowed the, the, the instrument of power to be the source of economic power. So to that extent, you would understand that there is also inbuilt gains, apart from the so-called service that is associated with office. And by the way, power is sweet. Let's be very honest about that. So the only way to come out of that is to begin to continuously push the envelope of Ten limits in the ECOWAS protocol on democracy and good governance. Because we have seen the nexus between term limits and conflict in West Africa. I think the change is in the air and the people are looking forward enthusiastically to it. Uh, for the very first time, I, I, I saw the unism amongst the Gambians in terms of how they want to have a new political order. You know, and I think, and I think they, they will just get what they deserve at the end of the day. So I think, I think there is a new political order, a new political calculation, including up to the extent that the person that is coming into power is not even a politician. Mr. Eze had been confident that the meeting between ECOWAS leaders and Gambian President Yaya Jammeh would result in President Jammeh seeing reason and eventually stepping down. With this is decision week, so what could happen? Mr. Eze again has the answers. Constitutionally. The Gambia cannot be without a president. By the 12th midnight of 18th of January, Yaya Jamez tenor is over. And the international community has acknowledged that much. He will cease to be head of state and commander in chief. So, two scenarios. One is that the military takes over. Two is that the president elect is sworn into office. The first is not an option for ECOWAS, it's zero tolerance especially when you have a president-elect. Constitutionally, Yaya Jame has a right to reject that election. But the only person that can say the election is credible is the Independent Electoral Commission. And the person has spoken. Until and otherwise challenged by the court, president-elect Adama Barrow will become the next president of Gambia.